considered myself a Christian because I was a quote good person, relatively. <laughs> I uh, went to church once in a while. I was an American. I was Christian. Sure. That's what I thought. And I thought everybody thought that. I didn't know that. I didn't know about this whole new world out there with believers in Jesus Christ that were genuine Christians. It was like a little seed, is all it was. It was just a seed. And, and it germinated and grew into <laughs> genuine faith as the Lord drew me to himself. But I got on the phone the next day and I called people. I remember calling my aunt and telling her about this wonderful thing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin. That's why he died. And did you know he was perfect? And he never sinned? And because of that, now, you know, when I received that free gift and I, I had, didn't have to do anything because all along I was thinking I had to work to be good to impress God. And I'm telling her, we didn't have to do anything. He, we just have to believe, it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Through Mickey, I met Pat. She was really excited because she thought I was saved. I wasn't. Are you saved? And she had big eyes and bulging out. <laughs> Oh, oh, I didn't even know what save meant. What? And it scared me. Anyway, so, but, but now I know what saved means. And yes, I am saved by the grace of God. If you have received Christ, it is an expectation from the Holy Spirit that we confess it to somebody. Tell someone that you have received that free gift. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you have to believe in your heart and not just with your head. There's nothing worse than being 18 inches away from heaven or hell. 18 inches, the distance from our head to our heart. Do we believe with our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead? And if you do that, say amen. <laughs> I believe it. Amen. And I'm going to speak it, and I'm going to tell somebody else. And so, um, so my aunt said, well, Michelle, just don't get too carried away with all that stuff. That was what she said. And that's why I said, I don't know how anyone can turn away from that kind of love. And she just spurned it. Obviously, she had heard it before. I hadn't. And she was warning me, do not go there. Don't get fanatical. Yeah. And I thought to myself, um, didn't Jesus get a little carried away by going to cross and suffering for hours and hours and letting them whip him with a whip with shards in it and, you know, bone and whatever else and ripped at his skin? I think he got a little carried away with things, don't you? But it was required because it says in Isaiah, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. He had to shed his blood for us. He is the only way. What are some ways of uh, salvation that other people come up with? So it doesn't matter, there are lots of plans of salvation, but the only one that matters is the one God Sam works, right? That's the only one. But there are a lot of others out there. So what are a couple? A good person. You're a good person. Good ones. Mm -hmm. Do lots of good things. I guess going go to church. church. Go to church. Go to church. Go to church. Uh -huh. um, and not even go to church, but some of them will say go to the right church. Yeah. Go to this church or you're not saved. You have to be a member of this church. I'm going to tell you something, ladies. If anyone ever tells you that, you turn around and you run the opposite direction. There is no one true church. We are the church. None. The church is right here in this room. It's made up of people who have surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ who have received that free gift and have confessed it to others. 
that is the church. That is, if you want to call it the one true church, that's it. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man comes to the Father but through me. Amen. He is the way. He is the one way. And uh, it would behoove us to, uh, to heed that and to not spurn that or turn away uh, like the people in Hosea's day were. Verse 5, It was I who knew you in the wilderness, in the land of drought. But when they had grazed, they became full. They were filled, and their heart was lifted up. Therefore they forgot me. Again, isn't that how we are? Where uh, in verse 6 it says they had grazed. Does anyone's Bible have a different word there? Mine says that they became satisfied. Ah, yeah. Think about grazing on Thanksgiving. Are we not satisfied? We just eat all day long. <laughs> yes, we graze. We're satisfied. We're not hungry. You never even get to experience hunger. Not even once that day. Um, they were satisfied. Someone said pasture. I like that, too. It's like they're just out on this meadow, just chewing away, just content. And they became full, which could also mean proud, and comfortable, and at ease. And that's when they forgot God. It's a strange and terrible aspect about our human nature. That when things are going well, we forget about God. When we're living in ease, we forget about God. And God says, I have been your God, the one who brought you up out of Egypt. I am not about to give you up, but I am going to judge you. There. That's the one. He's taken them out of Egypt. How would you feel about walking through the Red Sea with these huge banks of water on both sides? That would take a lot of faith. I mean, well, what's our choice? We're going to, we've got to trust God. We can't do anything else because if we, if we don't go, the Egyptians are going to get us. They're going to kill us. So let's go through. But the neat thing is they went through on dry land. If that land wasn't even muddy. Only God could do that. And they did that. And he said, I, I was the one that brought you out of Egypt. That, who do you think opened that up? Again. They'd heard that story. They knew it happened. Why they didn't believe it. It's just like now we hear the story of Christ. We knew it happened. It's a historical proven fact that that happened. That a man named Jesus walked the earth and died on the cross. Uh, and we don't, we don't trust in that. We don't receive that. You are the one who knows.